Well, I'm glad that um, everything worked out and we're here. So thank you for taking a minute out. Absolutely. Thank you. So you sorry that you hit, saw the decline there. Yeah. yeah, no, it's all good. Now we made it. We make it work. It's, it's just good. it's how you respond to things. So uh, where are you where are you coming out of? I'm in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. OK, cool. Very cool. Yeah. So I'm here in Kansas City, Missouri. Yes, you are. <laughs> so I want to begin everything here before we get into your esteemed career about how you survived COVID the last three years was quite a thing, did quite a, a number on all of us. How did you get through it? And how has it changed the way that you do things now? So, you know, I honestly didn't experience too much. Well, let me start again. Everything in my life looks different now than it did three years ago. But, you know, I think when you approach things with a positive attitude and equanimity, you just adapt as things come up. So. Um, you know, I, uh, we took, my husband and I took this opportunity to launch a bunch of entrepreneurial endeavors that we felt were necessary and that would respond in a post COVID world. So, um, you know, in some ways it's been kind of a fun adventure. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get to the essence and heart and soul to understand what you do for a living. You know, on paper, there's a lot of things, but I want to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day. Uh -huh. One of the kids looks up and says, hey, what do you do for a living? How would you answer that child? I would say I help people create businesses so that they can have more freedom and joy in their life. I'm hearing that more and more. You just wouldn't think, I don't know that a lot of people know that this service exists in the world. How did this come about? How did this kind of niche become a thing now that people go after? Well, I think your first question really uh, answered itself. It was COVID. I mean, you know, so many people um, got used to being home during the pandemic, but still receiving a paycheck. And then all of a sudden, when faced with the reality of, especially women, I'll, I'll talk directly to my own experience, but, you know, when being faced with the reality of having to leave the home and suddenly you can't do a load of laundry between meetings and you can't stop and frost a dozen cupcakes for the third grade class visit, you know, on your, you know, after your lunch hour or whatever. I think it was a, a harsh reality to say, wait, I, I have to leave my home again and go work for a paycheck. And so I think a lot of people got the desire to have that flexibility in their lives to be able to really dictate their own schedule and kind of be more in control of their own destiny. So when you were in the third grade, what was your dream? What did you want to be when you grew up? I don't know that I knew, but if I have to give you an answer right now, I would say that I wanted to be a writer. Okay. Which you've, you've become. Um, yeah. So talk to me a little bit about the beginnings of your life. Where were you born and raised and what were these seeds? You're obviously very highly driven, very diversified, lots of things going on. You're there to help people. How did this happen? Well, let's see. I'm originally from Denver, Colorado, born and raised there, uh, came from older parents and an only child. So that was part of the, you know, I was an adult by the time I was eight sort of thing. Yeah. Um, uh, and then um, really just, have never really been satisfied with what I was told I was supposed to do. You know, I did come from older parents. So um, even though I'm only in my fifties, my mother would have turned a hundred this year. Um, so um, actually last year, she'd be 101 this year. So, so I had these older parents that grew up in the great depression. And so their values were very different. And so I was really told that what I was supposed to do was, you know, sure, I could get an education, but really, I was going to college to look for my MRS, you know, and um, that's really an out, that was an outdated mode of thinking when I was growing up, but today it's really jarring. And so I think I rebelled against that early. <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, I, I have, a, a, as you said, a diversified career. I just um, never found what I really wanted to do. I, I got my bachelor's degree in marketing and I did that for a few years and it felt kind of soulless. It just didn't feel like it really helped people. And so um, my first husband and I went on what we called the big adventure and we bought a motor home and quit our jobs and put everything in storage and traveled around the United States for seven months and spent some time in lovely Kansas City, Missouri, beautiful town. Yeah. Um, and then 
came back and I decided I wanted to do something that felt more purposeful. So I became a, a professor. I went and I got a PhD in um, history. I fell in love with history mainly because it tells the story of humanity. It shows how people have lived and overcome adversity and innovated and done all these amazing things over time. And I've always believed in the human potential. So I was a professor for 12 years and then realities of life changed. And I went to work for a nonprofit that was a spiritual organization. And um, that led me on, on a very spiritual path. That and 25 years ago, I survived stage four lymphoma. Oh, wow. So the the combination of surviving cancer at age 33 and then also um, uh, just kind of the the never being satisfied in a career path um, has really driven me to just want to be of service to want to I want to tell people that they can live their best life no matter what's happening in the world. Yeah, you know, for sure. Well, and I, I would imagine surviving a health scare was quite a level of you seeing the world in a very different light and probably processing COVID in a different way. It it probably yeah. wasn't as magnanimous as, as it was for everybody else because right. you realize things in a very different way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, well, I was, I was um, 33 years old. Like I said, I had a three-year-old daughter and a 20% chance of survival. Wow. And so you do, you really think differently. And, and what it, did for me is it took away the fear of death. I mean, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't really necessarily believe in heaven or hell or any of that, but I do believe that there's more than just this plane of existence that we can't explain. So I feel like this is one chapter in a big adventure story. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, you know, I agree. Yeah. 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 Like different, like almost in a reincarnating way, a different yeah. it, things you got to overcome and face and kind of like levels in a video game, so to speak. <laughs> I love that analogy. Yeah, exactly. I love that analogy. Yeah, moving on up. Who's been a hero for you in your life? Oh, my goodness. I have so many. Probably because I do, I am a historian. Probably my biggest hero was Abraham Lincoln. Um, I know he was a man and, a, you know, a dead white man, which <laughs> I know is kind of not politically correct necessarily right now. But, um, but you know, I know a lot about Abraham Lincoln, and he overcame so many things in his life. He overcame a lack of education. He overcame um, what many scholars believe was um, depression. Um, he overcame the death of a, a, two, two sons. Um, and then, you know, I think it was in overcoming all of that, that it gave him the emotional intelligence and the empathy to be able to lead the nation through its greatest crisis uh, because he understood humanity. He understood how people react. And so um, I just, I, I'm fascinated with him. So as a PhD certified history buff, if you could go back in time and witness any piece of history that took place in the world, what would you love to have seen firsthand? Oh, wow. Well, I live in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, so I kind of feel like I see the Battle of Gettysburg every day yeah. um, in, in many ways. And I, I would have loved to have been there at the Gettysburg Address based on my feeling of Lincoln. But let's see, if we open up the scope, um, probably, I probably would have really enjoyed um, this is going to sound silly, but you know, in the 1920s, women were first allowed to get driver's licenses. I would have loved to have been in the car with the first woman who got her driver's license and experienced for the first time the freedom of being able to hit the open road on her own. Yeah, that's cool. That's really <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, so if you can meet anybody alive right now on the planet, who would it be? Who would you love to meet and talk to? Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. How boring is that? Everybody no. wants to meet Oprah. <laughs> it's it's either it, the top one and two of that answer is Michelle Obama or Oprah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And boy, that would probably be my one and two right there. But you know, um, it, you know, if I had to branch out, I think I I'd love to. I would love to sit down today before uh, the 2024 election with Kamala Harris and yeah. find out. Like, how blown away is she by everything that's happening in the world? <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. 
So what is the motivation for you every day to do what you do? You obviously have a lot of things going on. You give a lot of yourself. What is the gas in your tank, the motivation that gets you up and moving and achieving what you want to get done? It's going to sound really cliche, Joe. I almost I almost hate to say it because it sounds really cliche. I really love people. I really love people. Yeah. Um one of our newest entrepreneurial endeavors, my husband and I just opened a food hall here in Gettysburg where we have 10 restaurant concepts that are fast casual and a bar and things like that. And I love going in there every day and just standing at the door and greeting people. You know, where are you from? Are you traveling? Welcome. What do you feel like for lunch? You can go to any of these places, you know. Um, I love hearing people's story. Part of the reason I love studying history and studying leadership is I love watching interactions of people. It fascinates me. So to be able to sit down with someone and just have a conversation about what's happening in their life and where they want to go and what's their vision and knowing that I can, in some small way, help them get there. I just, I don't know, just, it just feels, it feels like a higher calling to me. Yeah. So what's your favorite success story that you've been involved with as a professional? Ooh, let's see. My favorite professional success story. So I, ooh, well, one of them's my own, but um, I'll I'll put that on the back burner. But so I had a client who was a um, full-time nutritionist and she really wanted to start a company that worked more with hospitals, not to teach the patients nutrition, but to get the hospital kitchens to make more nutritious food. And she wanted to go out and contract with all these hospitals. She didn't believe she could do it. She really believed that she had to continue to work her full-time nutritionist job to pay the bills. And that had to be a side hustle. But she was always putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And she started to hate her quote, day job, even though it was her own business, more and more. Um, So we worked together and she um, finally was able to create a business plan, take it, pitch it to a hospital. Um, The hospital loved it so much that they pitched it to their board. The board was able to get an angel investor in to start it. And she now works with 25 hospitals across the nation. Wow. So of all of the things that you've accomplished in your professional career, what are you the proudest of? Hmm. I'm probably, (laughs) it depends on the day. It keeps getting better. You know, it keeps getting better. Things I was really proud of 10 years ago, I'm still proud of, but you know, now I feel like I've just gone to the next level. Um, So probably my, what I'm the most proud of is, are my, my books. I mean, you know, I, I started out writing, Um, And if you look, I have a slightly different name, but um, I have a lot of uh, history books that I wrote. I wrote historical, you know, the thing you have to do when you're in academia, historical monographs, chapters and anthologies, things like that. But that, you know, it's very uh, well researched, but it doesn't, again, deal with that human dynamic. Yeah. So um, I'm probably the most proud of the the books that I've written that really um, are more coaching oriented books that help people you know, deal with adversity, change, conflict, things like that. So speaking of adversity, change, and all of those things, and even achievement, let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into the 20-year-old version of yourself, and you could give that version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom you've gained in your life up to this point. What would you tell that younger version, and would that version of you listen? (laughs) I like the second half of the question. (laughs) That's the caveat. (laughs) Uh, if I could tell my 20 year old self anything, I would just tell my 20 year old self to relax. It's going to be okay. Just relax. You don't have to be perfect. Um, just let take things as they come. Uh, would my 20 year old self listen? Woo. I'd like to think so, but honestly, <laughs> I think probably not. <laughs> I, I get it. That's that's the usual answer right there. So of all of these capacities that you're involved with, everyone has a version of you, family, friends, readers, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Ooh, 
who do I think I am? I think that I think I'm just a normal woman. I think I'm a normal woman who really wants to be happy. So I chase, I chase joy. And um, so whatever that strikes me, and that's why I always say my career path looks kind of like a blind man going down a crooked hallway. You know, I go a little bit and hit a wall and adjust and go a little bit and hit a wall and adjust. And, um, but, but, you know, I, I think that I'm, I'm just, you know, uh, someone who, um, I gave up around the, around the time I had cancer, I gave up not feeling good. I was just tired of not, of being stressed out, of being anxious. And so I would just see myself as someone who, maybe it's hedonistic, but I, I just seek doing the things that really fulfill me, that really please me, that really bring me joy. And so I'm growing and changing. So those things are always growing and changing. Yeah. Good for you. As a writer, what was the first book for you? What was the gateway drug? The one that made you want to read more or become a writer one day? <laughs> the Godfather. And I, but, but it's funny because I was, I think I was like nine or 10 years old. and. um the Godfather was my my mom was reading, but I don't think she wanted me to know she was reading it because she had it hidden in the nightstand in our <laughs> guest bedroom. And I found it and I it, I was way too young to read The Godfather. <laughs> what I mean, it, it, I was way too young and it was so forbidden but I opened it and I read it and I just got lost in this whole other world that scared the bejesus out of me. But but it was so real and it was so vivid and it was so um, fascinating that I would go in like every day after school for like an hour, I would go in the spare room and kind of like, push the door shut and open the <laughs> nightstand, read another chapter and then put it back, you know, where I where I found it. And um, that's when I just became an avid, avid reader. And now, like I read two two novels a week, you know, I'm I love to read. And yeah, so that's wonderful. So, yeah. Judy, if anyone out there wants to hire you, learn more about you, get your books, anything pertaining to your very vast world, where can they go? So all my books, well, my motivational books are available on Amazon. So um, Doc, Dr. Judy Morley is what I publish as. Um, so they can search for those. They're all on Amazon. And then my website is just my name.net, drjudymorley.net. So they can contact me through the website. Um and reach out that way. Dr. Judy, thank you so much for taking time out today. It was a fascinating story. I appreciate you opening up with the show. Thanks, Joe. Take care. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye.